Good morning, folks. We've got a few items to hit in terms of space weather. We're going to take a quick look at a recent story about the sun, update the earthquake death toll, and peek in on continuing research into Earth's magnetic field dynamics. We are starting with our star, and the last day did not have significant eruptive behavior in Earth's direction, but we are seeing a slow rise in the X-ray flare marks. We will see why in just a moment, along with taking a look at the solar wind, but before that, we are noticing plasma jetting activity off the incoming limb, indicative of potential activity incoming the remainder of the week. We have several small but growing active regions turning towards the central heliographic position, but let's first check in on the solar wind. We are inside the coronal hole stream right now. Luckily, it was slow to onset because the peak speed is now approaching 700 kilometers per second. This is driving only KP4, mild geomagnetic instability due to its measured onset. Doubtful we'll get anything significant from this one geomagnetically. The slow rise in X-ray production is due to growing sunspots on the disk. You can see the advance of maturity in two active regions here, especially the one south of the Earth scale. We will have eyes on these today. Quick note. The death tolls in the massive earthquake sequence in Turkey and Syria has now topped 5,000 and could grow further still. The aftershocks are still hitting the area even into this morning. Lots of chatter online about an unprecedented northern polar vortex on the sun. I continue to shake my head at the way they title these articles, because as the article even says, no, this is not unprecedented. In fact, it happens every solar cycle. I've seen this before, and for those who take the electrical view of the spheres, it's not unexpected to see plasma caught in the energetic vortex at the polar region. Not quite as fun of a story as the title would have us believe. This is fun, however. Colliding galaxies with a mid-infrared peak brightness between them that was totally invisible to Hubble. James Webb spots the incredible brightness in orange on the right, where Hubble couldn't due to the wavelengths captured. And while they guess it could be a starburst or black hole, the better explanation is this is the interacting plasma connection between the galaxies colliding almost like a slow discharge of energy, or like the little shock you get when static builds up to your body and your hand goes to touch a doorknob. The spark or energy, the transfer between the two is what they're seeing. Let's go back in time for a moment. We've seen several papers on the odd chorus waves in the magnetosphere and how they're causing unusual or unexpected phenomena at the top of the sky. Those are due to Earth's magnetic field changes, and we've got another interesting paper here today about how those affect the aurora. If you recall, the behavior of those aurora helped to drive the geomagnetically induced current that poses a risk to our electrified way of life, and so the complex dynamic studies are marching on. Folks, right now you can only get a hard copy of Weatherman's Guide to the Sun directly from Book Baby. The link is below. You can still get the PDF versions of all our books from the Podia site link below, and with shipping costs, it's actually cheaper for you to get the PDF and print it yourself. I made a mistake here yesterday. I had May 15th for the San Diego event when it is in fact May 13th. My apologies. Grab your tickets at the link below in the description box. We greatly appreciate your support. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.